Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today we're doing a makeover to our outdoor fireplace area, which is right behind me. So we've got a brick patio here, and then we've got a beautiful canopy of old trees and shrubs. So there's a red bud, a lilac, a big service berry shrub, and a locust tree. And they make it feel very intimate and cozy and nice and shady in here. And of course, the old fireplace, which dates back to 1908, and it still functions beautifully. We actually have had some furniture in here for the past couple of years since we bought the house, but it was the furniture that the previous owners owned, and they practically gave it to us for a song because they didn't really want to move it. We we were super thankful for it because it was nip and tuck. Like Aaron sold an iPad and I used some extra Christmas cash I had laying around to be able to afford this house. So we were super thankful for the furniture and we're gonna use it in another place in our garden because it's still really nice. But Plow and Hearth sent us out a beautiful patio set that we're gonna use in this area and some planters and accessories. So a huge thank you to Plow and Hearth for partnering with us on this project. And my whole goal for this video, you guys, is for you to see the transformation and hopefully to inspire you uh, to transform your outdoor space into an area that you really want to be in. So I want to bring out the love seat first and this love seat is from the Claremont collection. It's made out of eucalyptus wood and I really like the color of the wood. It's kind of a really nice medium tone. It's not too dark or too light. I just think it's perfect. It's got a slatted seat on the bottom and then a really pretty X design on the back. It's about 55 inches long and 30 inches deep. Now I'm going to place the chairs on either side of the love seat and they are the same construction as the love seat. They're just half as wide and I'm going to face them in toward the center to create a really nice conversation area. Okay, so now I'm going to go grab the cushions which actually are included in this set. It's just much easier to move it without them and I love how deep they are and they're very soft so it makes them really comfortable to sit in and I chose them in the color Midnight Navy but they do come in several other colors depending on your style. There's also a coffee table that comes with this set that has the same design with the slatted wood top and then the designs on the side. I just think that this furniture fits really well in this space because you don't want it to be too big so that it's uncomfortable to move around or too small so that the space swallows it up. I just feel like this set fits really nicely in this area. And now to make it even more comfortable and colorful, I'm going to add a few throw pillows and I've got three different styles here. I've got a plain one just in midnight navy, then I have midnight hydrangea and midnight filigree and I feel like they all match really well and make it really fun. Okay, so now to warm up the area even more, I'm gonna add two 20 inch Lexington self-watering planters in between the chair and the love seat on each side. And I've brought a bunch of shade plants over. I'm not even sure what I'm gonna put in them yet, but when I'm done planting, I'll give you a little tour. So not only did I get the pots planted up, but I brought out a few other accessories as well just to make this area complete and wonderful. I absolutely love it. Um, so what I wanna do is give you a tour of all the plants I used and then all of the things that are in this space again. So let's start with this pot right back here. This is a 20 inch Lexington planter, which is self-watering. So I'm really excited to see how it does in this space. So plants, I had a ball putting together these containers. I used a lot of different foliage plants down here. Um, my centerpiece plant right here is called a Bridal Veil Astilbe, which is a great shade perennial. Now these blooms look awesome like fireworks, I love it. They won't last all summer, so when, they're, when they start to fade, I'll just cut the bloom stalk off at the base and I'll still be left with a lot of beautiful foliage. And then a step down, I've got irisine, which is in the amaranth family. Not only do you have beautiful pink variegation, you also have the beautiful bright pink stems. I love that plant. And then starting on this side, we have Lemon Twist Plectranthus. So this is uh, one that will be kind of a filler and then also will spill out a little bit over the side. Diamond Frost Euphorbia, which is a favorite of mine. I love this plant. There's Coleosaurus coleus, which makes a great house plant if you so choose to bring it in for the winter, as is the Iron Cross Oxalis and the Creeping Wire Vine. And then on this side, we've got a Evercolor Everest Carex, which is a great perennial grass. So that's those containers. I did the same thing in both of them on either side of the uh, love seat. 
And then right over here, for both of the tall Lexington planters, I did a tall arrangement on either side of the fireplace. So I started with a bay laurel. Um, this is a little lollipop tree and it kind of brings a sense of formality, I think, to the area. And then I underplanted it with blues and whites because I kind of wanted to tie together the colors from the throw pillows with the containers. So I've got Super Bell's White, Super Tunia Indigo Charm, and then Diamond Frost Euphorbia. And we've got a log rack. This is also from Plow and Hearth. And it's nice because it's got all the tools that you need, you know, like to tend your fire and clean up your mess. And we were keeping all of our wood in a totally untidy stack over here on the fireplace ledge. So it's very nice to have it organized over here. Then I did a little succulent arrangement for the coffee table. And this particular pot right here actually has a plug in the drain, which is really nice because I didn't have to use any saucer that didn't really match the pot. And it'll keep water from spilling out and wrecking the surface of the coffee table. And it'll make it to where I hardly ever have to water this container because as you know, succulents don't like a whole lot of water. So I'll probably only have to water a handful of times throughout the summer. And this spot right here does get some morning sun. So I think that these plants will be very happy. So on this side of the fireplace, again, just another tall Lexington planter with the same arrangement. And I really like when you look at it from backed up, you can see both arrangements and it looks very balanced and formal and brings some color, I guess, you know, it just unifies the whole area. And then for the icing on the cake, not that all of this isn't icing because it's all gorgeous to me. I did bring out some patio lights because I couldn't help it. I think they make any area just feel warm and inviting. Um, I kept them kind of away from the fireplace because that'll create its own light. Um, but I think that Aaron, Benjamin, and I are going to break this area in tonight. I think we're going to light a fire and just really enjoy this space. So I really hope you guys enjoyed seeing this area come together kind of from a blank slate. I mean, so much fun. Um, we will leave links to all of this stuff down below. I mean, even a list of the plants that I used if you're interested in learning any more about this. Also, a huge thank you again to Plow and Hearth for working with us on this video. Definitely couldn't have done it without you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.